Got a new pair of speakers and they don't sound like the glowing review promised? Relax, it might not be your gear. The most overlooked and important component of any hi-fi or home theater system isn't the amp, the DAC, or the speakers. It's the room. Let's break down how to fix that. I'm Elon Osborne, and this is Acoustically Speaking. To be honest, this is one of those topics that doesn't get enough attention. Aside from drooling over that dream system you've been chasing for months, maybe years, most people don't think twice about room acoustics, and then only realize it once the boxes are open and disappointment sets in. Before you buy another piece of gear, remember this. Your room is the single most important component of your stereo. Even with something as simple as a pair of wireless speakers, setup and room acoustics matter. We've heard plenty of six-figure stereo systems that left us less than impressed, so don't feel too bad if your $500 bookshelf speakers don't blow your mind right out of the box. Experience teaches, even when it's a painful financial lesson, that even the best stereo systems can fail to deliver the sound you were expecting if the room isn't cooperating or lacks proper acoustic treatment. Room acoustics affect every loudspeaker, no exceptions. Concert halls, theaters, recording studios, they all use acoustic treatment for a reason. Sure, in your home, there are domestic realities to navigate, like your spouse giving the stink eye to bass traps or absorption panels hanging in the living room. But the truth is, every room has acoustic issues. The good news, there are reasonable solutions to make your new speakers sound better than they ever did in the store. Everything about your room matters. Shape, dimensions, surface materials, even the position of windows and doorways. Sound waves interact with the room and objects inside it. Before they reach your ears, they're bouncing, reflecting, and getting absorbed in ways that can completely change what you hear. Before you buy anything, think about the type of loudspeakers you're considering and how it might interact with your room. If you're using a typical living space like a den or living room, measure your room and figure out how far back you'll be sitting from the speakers and how far into the room you can place them. Domestic realities often mean you won't be able to position your speakers three to five feet from the wall, which is honestly the sweet spot for an open, deep, wide soundstage. But there are ways to work with what you have. Modern homes with lots of windows might look amazing, but all that glass can wreak havoc on your sound. Reflections off glass can mess with spatial cues and make your system sound bright or harsh. Don't panic, there are solutions, which we'll get to. Room shape and dimensions are critical for bass response. Bass waves need space to develop, but even a smaller room can deliver low frequency information if you make the right acoustic adjustments. Sound waves from your speakers are absorbed, reflected, or transmitted through the room and into adjoining spaces. A rectangular room is generally easier to work with than a perfect square. Floor surfaces also have a major impact. Hard surfaces like stone, tile, or marble without rugs will make your system sound bright or forward. Despite what you might think, hardwood floors help absorb sound, but you'll still need rugs or carpeting to tame reflections and low frequency energy. Too much carpet or furniture can deaden a room, so the goal is a nice balance. Lively enough to feel engaging, but controlled enough to avoid muddiness. Professional acoustic panels work as advertised, but let's be honest, they usually look awful in a home, and they're not cheap. The good news, if your goal is to minimize first reflection points and improve bass response, there are plenty of inexpensive practical solutions you can implement. The wall behind your speakers should never be too hard, like bare drywall or overly absorptive. A wall unit filled with books, picture frames, or records will help control reflections and absorb some bass if your speakers sit too close to the wall. Without it, bass waves wrap around the back of the speaker, bounce off the wall, and arrive out of phase with the rest of the sound. The result? Music that seems glued to the wall with no depth or width. First reflection points along the sidewalls are hugely important for imaging and clarity. Treating these points can make everything sound more three-dimensional and focused. You'll need an assistant for this quick fix. Sit in your listening position while a partner moves a small mirror along the sidewalls. When you see the speaker's reflection, mark it with a pencil on the wall. In professional setups, acoustic panels absorb frequency information at these points. At home, you can mimic the effect with bookshelves, wall hangings, or artwork. Furniture can also help tame reflections and excessive bass. Think a large sofa or wood coffee table. Avoid glass tables if you can because they can just make things worse. 
Carpets and area rugs are another big improvement. They reduce room noise, dampen reverberation, and absorb reflections. If you can, stick to natural fibers like wool. They work better than synthetics. Room acoustics might not be glamorous, but addressing just two to three of these issues can yield massive sonic rewards. You don't need to spend a fortune either. Use what you already have, grab a tape measure and a mirror, and get to work. And lastly, good luck. And that's it for this episode of Acoustically Speaking. Have you started minimizing room reflections or taming those sneaky bass frequencies yet? Are you looking forward to roping a friend into holding a mirror while you sit back and relax in your prime listening spot? Yeah, I thought so. As always, to keep up with everything from room acoustics and hi-fi to home audio, home theater, wearables, gadgets, and tech, bookmark acoustics.com. Until next time.